Am I gonna see Jamie shot? No, it turns out Jenny's just as quick thinking as her brother. It turns out that Jenny and Ian have a relationship with The Watch, which if you'll remember, they're the group that kind of fights against the Redcoats and they're all pretty vicious. But Ian and Jenny think it's better than the Redcoats coming to get them. So when Jenny realizes they're there, she rushes into the room and makes light of it and says that Jamie's just her cousin, McTavish. Jamie McTavish. And it totally works because he's never met Jamie before. So everybody at Lally Brock just goes along with it and continue to live with The Watch in their house. And everything's going pretty well until one of the creepy guys gets drunk and lights their hay on fire and then laughs and laughs about it. Jamie is not amused and they get into the inevitable fight. Mr. McQuarrie walks over and tells everybody to stand down and they actually do. And so things just continue to move along until Mr. Horrocks shows up and he recognizes Jamie. He has power over Jamie. He knows there's a price on his head and he wants that money. He's kind of like the guy from that show Bounty Hunters, only his name's not Dog. Just in case this wasn't enough drama, there's more that's going to happen because now Jenny's found the perfect time to go into labor. So she and Claire head back into the house and Claire's going to deal with bringing another baby into the group at Lolly Brock. Claire breaks the news to Jenny that she's going to have to actually pull the baby out and Jenny takes this all in stride except she says she's going to need a lot of alcohol first. Claire warns her that the baby could come out drunk too but Jenny says she's not worried about it. That baby will be born a true Scott. Meanwhile, Jamie has decided to pay Mr. Horrocks what he wants because, well, he would prefer not to be turned over to the Redcoats and he doesn't want to leave Claire. But then the guy pulls a gun on Jamie and you think he's going to die. Again! Thankfully, you see a sword come right through Horrocks' stomach and he dies. And the person at the other end of that sword is Ian. And now the Horrocks problem is solved, except for one thing. Uh, McQuarrie's wondering where Horrocks went to because his horse is still at the house, but he's just gone. And he keeps pressuring Jamie to come along on the watch, but Jamie just doesn't want to do it and keeps telling him no, keeps telling him no. But he's going to be coerced because it turns out that unlike Jamie, Claire, and Jenny, Ian cannot mask his true emotions and he looks guilty as sin. Jamie notices this and takes it all in stride and takes the blame for killing the guy. At which point McQuarrie laughs and laughs and it seems like everybody's gotten off scot-free. But nothing's ever free. And so Jamie is now coerced into going along on a ride with the watch. This can't be good. But now it's time to talk about my favorite scenes from this episode. When Claire is trying to turn Jenny's baby from breech to head down, Jenny brings up the fact that she thinks Claire is infertile and suggests a tea for her to drink. But why this is interesting is because it's a woman-to-woman -woman conversation and you can tell that Jenny now really wants to be friends with Claire, family with her. It's also the first time that Claire's infertility has really come up since the first part of the first season where she's discussing it with Frank. Which leads to my next favorite scene and that is when Claire tells Jamie she thinks she's infertile. He doesn't say anything at first and then asks her if it's because of her time that she spent with Frank and then all the months they've been together. And she tells him yes and he says nothing again but then he says perhaps it's for the best. I could bear pain myself but I could not bear yours. When Ian kills Mr. Horrocks and saves Jamie. His shaking reaction is so surprising, you just don't expect it when they live in this rough-and-tumble, kill-everybody society. But for Ian, killing is just the worst. He didn't want to do it in the war and he doesn't want to do it now. Jamie can see that it bothers him and reminds him of their conversation when they were kids about whether fornication or killing was the worst sin. They don't really come to a conclusion, but they decide if they're going to hell, they're going to go together. Jenny and Claire in the delivery room. I use the term delivery room loosely. Why is she on a bed of hay? I guess she doesn't want to ruin her mattress, but still, oh, it was very mangery. Anyway, Jenny starts to share her very real concerns about not living through the birth of her child, and Claire listens to it, but just really won't put any credence in it. She's trying to be encouraging. But Jenny gives her this little snake that her brother had carved out for Jamie. In the end, Jamie and Ian are coerced into riding with the watch, and they decide to go together. But they decide, yeah, you know what? We'll tell Jenny goodbye since she is giving birth right now. Claire is not amused at this turn of events and suggests that they not leave. But Jenny says, get out of here because she knows waiting isn't really going to make a big difference. So they leave. Jenny has her baby, survives, and then they're just sitting there waiting for the boys to come home. And they wait. And they wait. And they wait. And then finally one day they see Ian coming back on the somebody else's shoulders and he's missing his leg. His face is all bloody and he's obviously come into some major trouble. Sadly, the person he's walking with is not Jamie. What we come to realize is that even though Horrocks is dead, his plan was still in motion and the Redcoats attacked them and they didn't see it coming at all. And Jamie actually is captured and now the Redcoats have him. This cannot be good. Oh.